Well, hey folks, and welcome to Solar Cabin's channel. Uh, this is another one of my uh, cabin designs. I call this the Cedar Billy Cabin. Now, actually, uh, some people call this an Adirondack style cabin. I guess that's probably where they first started building them. I don't know why they say that because they're actually uh, been this type of cabin around long before that, and they're all over the country. But uh, what these are, what makes them unique, is uh, this style of cabin has this overhanging loft. And that also provides a covered porch down here. That's different than some other styles uh, that uh, don't use an overhanging loft. Now, I have greatly reduced this. Usually you see these Adirondack cabins are much, much larger. They're like 16 by 20 or even much, much larger than that. Uh, I had to do a lot of work to reduce this down to a 12 by 16. Now, this is 12 feet wide by 16 feet long. Now you notice that the base is actually smaller than that. It's 12 feet by 12 feet. The loft is 12 feet by 16 feet. And because it uses these supports to hold up the loft, that has to be included in the square footage. Okay, That's important to know because if you're building this as a cabin on real property and you need to be under 200 square feet so you don't have to have a building permit, this porch is considered part of this house this cabin style and would be considered part of the footprint. The footprint is this area down here that the cabin actually sits on and they count this porch as part of that square footprint. So this is considered a 12 foot by 12 foot or by 16 foot even though four feet of that is the front porch area. Now why they designed these cabins uh, is for a couple reasons. This overhanging loft gives you more room up here but also acts as a great protection for the front porch and in high snow areas, or where you get a lot of bad weather and rain, this covered porch gives you a place where you can get in out of the weather while you're opening your door. You can set your stuff down. But it also protects the door from snow buildup. In areas where you get a lot of snow, you could have enough snow dump in front of this door that you wouldn't be able to get your door open in order to get out. On these small cabins, almost all small cabins are designed so that the door opens outwards instead of inwards. So if you get snow buildup in the front, that could be a problem. So this overhanging porch prevents the snow from building up in front of the door. The reason we have doors on these swing outwards is because that gives you more room on the inside of the cabin so that you're not going to be opening the door right into your furniture. So generally on small cabins, we open the door to the outside. On this cabin, you could design it so it opens to the inside, as I'll show you, but uh, most cabins have the doors open to the outside. Now, some features of this cabin that makes it really nice, and why, why, why I really like this design. This is a great design, and I had a whole lot of fun when I was working on this cabin. First, you can see that I used log cabin siding. You can use any type of siding you want. I just thought this looked really nice. Uh, it makes it look like a cabin, but it isn't logs. This is actually just siding that you can buy. It usually comes as three quarter inch thick or one inch thick panels that you put up that makes it look like a cabin. And you can see the, from the front here, I used a recycled wood panel door. And you can get these just about anywhere at any salvage yard. And uh, just sand them down, and then you can either stain them or leave them natural. And that gives you a really nice look, a cabin look. Uh, put an old-fashioned lock on it, and it really looks like a nice uh, old-fashioned old cabin. And uh, I put in wood frame window uh, with single-pane glass. Now, I generally recommend double-pane and low-E glass windows. But if you use these older windows, you can put another piece of glass behind them to make them double-pane. Uh, and that uh, doesn't add that much to the cost. Salvage windows and salvage doors will save you a lot of money, so I recommend that. On the front of this, uh, this lower level is 8 foot high, so this has a completely traditional uh, roof height, uh, or uh, lower level height for headroom. 8 foot high, the door is 6 foot 6 inches and 3 feet wide, so that's a traditional door. I like 3 foot wide doors because if you ever need to get a wheelchair in there, you can still open that door wide enough to get in a 3 foot wide door, so that's a, a standard size door there. Windows. Uh, up in the loft, you've got a 2x2 two two window. Uh, you've got a 2x3-foot window on each side of the door. As I said, you've got 8 feet of headroom in the lower level. In this peak, I got 6 feet of headroom from the floor up to the inside of this peak is 6 feet of headroom. That's a lot of headroom in a loft. Okay, That's enough room. 97% of, of people are under 6 feet tall, so that's tall enough for most adults to stand up in the middle of this. In a small cabin, that's a big feat to get that much headroom uh, in these places. And because you got 8 feet of headroom down the lower level, it makes it very livable. Now some other features you'll see. I said this porch is 4 feet wide and 12 feet long. 
okay and it's a covered porch so that gives you a nice area under here you could have a barbecue a couple of chairs and you can see these uprights and what I used for uprights here are four by fours however if you wanted to make this look more rustic you could use cedar or pine poles for the corner uprights now because this overhang hangs over here you have to have some supports underneath this loft otherwise this is going to start to sag and break down you're going to have problems with your structure so you have to have good uprights you could use four by fours or cedar or pine poles for the uprights and then you can see here that it has a four by four that runs underneath this uprights that supports this front edge of this so that it doesn't start sagging that's real important you got to have these supports in here okay some other features you'll notice that i put metal roofing on this cabin and I suggest metal roofing for a couple of reasons. Metal roofing, for one thing, gives you some fire protection. Uh, if, you, if you're in a forest fire situation or just any fire near your house, the embers blowing through the air will end up landing on your roof, and that's where the fire usually gets started in the house. Metal roofing gives you more protection than, say, wood shingles. Uh, you can also use uh, the asphalt-type shingles. Those uh, give you some protection and also work well at preventing fires, but a metal roof is generally used in areas where you got a lot of forest fire potential and embers blowing through the air. The other reason I recommend metal roofs is for rainwater harvesting. If you're going to cast the rain off your roof and you're going to filter it for drinkable use, you want to use a metal roof. Don't use shingles or shakes because shingles and shakes tend to collect the dirt, they collect the bird feces, and you're going to end up with water that has giardia and other diseases in it, so you don't want to use that for drinkable use. You can use that water for gardens, fruit trees, flushing your toilet, things like that, but don't use that for drinkable use. For a metal roof, though, you can, with a proper filtration system, actually filter that water and use it for, for potable or drinkable use. So that's a couple of good reasons for getting a metal roof. Metal roofs do add to the expense, generally. Painted metal roofs are going to cost a little bit more than what you'd spend on asphalt, but if you're going to be harvesting rain, it's worth the additional expense. Okay, like I said, I used... Uh, wood log siding on this which gives it a nice cabin look this base is 12 by 16 counting the porch the base unit first floor is 12 foot by 12 foot now you'd think that's kind of small but actually I'm going to take this wall off and show you lots of room inside but let's look at these other features here you've got a window on the living room side that is uh, four foot by three foot nice big window on this side over here to give it lots of light and in the back I've got Again, uh, some smaller windows, and this gives you cross ventilation in your cabin, which is important to keep your cabins cool. I've got a 2x2 two two window up in the loft area, a 2x2 two two window over the bathroom area in here, and a 3 foot by 2 foot window over this living area in here. Now, I want to mention something when you're designing your cabins that's real important. Window placement isn't, isn't just for looks, okay? There's a lot of important factors that go into where you place your windows. One of them is cross ventilation. You can see that I've got a windows on this on this side and up in the loft and windows on this side. And in small houses which tend to overheat fast, uh, faster than a big house, what you need is a lot of good ventilation so that you don't have to run air conditioning. Underneath this porch is going to be shaded, okay? Which means it's going to the air under here is going to be a few degrees or even quite a bit cooler than the air that's outside from, from the house. In the summertime, when you open these front windows, and if you have a screen door on this, you can open up your door too, the cool air from underneath the porch will go in. Cool air goes in and replaces the warm air and pushes the warm air out. So what you do is you open up these loft windows, and your cool air will go in, go up through the loft opening, push the warm air out of your cabin, and acts like passive natural air conditioning. This air will just keep circulating. Cool air coming in, warm air going up and coming out, and that adds uh, ventilation, circulation and cools down your cabin so you don't have to have an air conditioning system in these cabins if you place your windows correctly so that you have attic windows I would also recommend a roof passive turbine vent up here but I didn't include it in the pictures and you also want windows across from windows so you have cross circulation cool air enters in underneath the porch and will also exit out these back windows uh, where it's a little bit warmer on this side of the house so the air will circulate across this creates a nice little cool breeze always coming through the house to help cool down the house so windows aren't just put in there just for looks it's also important not to put in windows that are too big for a place I see a lot of people wanting to put in way too many windows in their designs if you do that you're gonna overheat your place in the summer and you're gonna make it difficult uh, to um, keep it warm in the winter time okay big windows in a small cabin are like opening up a hole in the side of your walls where you're gonna lose a lot of heat 
The other thing that you want is to make sure that your windows have an overhang. And you can see here I've got a one foot overhang on both sides of the loft. This will provide shading because the sun will be much higher in the summertime. And the, these overhangs will provide shade across these windows so that the sun won't beat directly through the windows heating up the cabin. If you didn't have an overhang over these windows, sun would go right through these windows and it would heat this cabin up like an oven. So it's important that you have an overhang. If you don't have an overhang on your cabin, and even if you do, what you should have is insulated blinds. Uh, which is a, a thin pad of insulation blinds that goes in front of these windows that will keep the sun from penetrating through the windows and also in the winter time it keeps the heat from going back out through the windows windows so that's important overhangs and proper shading on your windows and your cabins now on this side over here you'll notice that I didn't put any windows okay and uh, the reason for that is this is the side with my kitchen on it my kitchen cabinets are over here and this is the side with the bathroom on it the bathroom already has a window here so it doesn't need two windows and my shower sits right here so there's no reason to put a window inside the shower okay so this wall didn't need any windows so I didn't put any windows there but in your floor plan design you can do it any way you want and if you want windows on that go ahead and put windows in there okay so this is a really nice design this size home would be great for a couple of people, a single person, even a small family could fit in here. And I'm going to take the wall off here and show you what it looks like uh, right now. So let's go ahead and take a wall off and I'll show you what this cabin looks like. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the inside of this Cedar Billy cabin. And uh, I'm going to pull off one side of the wall here. Click on hide, and we'll pull this off. Now, I designed this from my perspective of how I would like to decorate it. So, uh, if the de if you're confused by the decorations or you don't like the decorations, you can change anything you want. I just put some stuff in here to give you some perspective of how it could be used. And uh, because I'm I'm an outdoorsman and a recreation kind of guy, I decorated this up from the perspective of a, a maybe a guy who really wants a, a place to, to hang out, uh, do a little fishing and hunting with his buddies, have his girlfriend over. But it would work for any purpose, and you can change the decorations to suit your needs. So first what I'll show you here is this uh, dining and uh, kitchen area. And uh, this has a lot of room in this cabin. First you can see uh, I've got a 2x6 two by, six by 2 by 6 foot table on a pedestal here, uh, two kitchen chairs, and this is enough room for two people to eat very comfortably. And you can push this bench over here and you could actually put two more people at this table. Uh, you could have a leaf underneath this table. You could open up the leaf and open and slide this box over and you got enough room for four people to eat comfortably at this table. And it looks like somebody's been playing cards on that table. Let's see what they did here. And they got a couple of aces. Ah, good hand. Okay, so what, what we got here is a window. That front window is right over my table, which I like because if you're sitting at the table, then you can look out your window. You can see if somebody's on your porch or coming up your yard. It also adds light uh, over your table and ventilation. Now, some things that I added in here that you might want to consider. Um, some decorations, but also kind of uh, some features. You can see I've got a pendulum, pendulum light. Uh, which are you can pick up just about anywhere now uh, not very expensive and you can get them in, in LED version so they don't use much power uh, they just have one cord that hangs down puts that pendulum light right over your kitchen area that's a nice little feature now like I said I decorated this for me so uh, I've got a four point buck horns on the wall over here I got my my uh, outdoor cowboy hat uh, hanging against the wall um, I also put some light switches in here. You may want to wire this for power, but this would also be light switches or power switches for your solar or wind power system to operate your lights and water pump and stuff like that. Now here's that door again, three foot by six foot six. And you can see in this cabin here, you could have this door swing inside if you wanted to or swinging outside. But in some cabins, small cabins, usually they just have the door swing outside. That way you're not going to open the door and, and run it right into somebody or something, the furniture that's right in this way. Gives you a little bit more room if you have them swing to the outside. Again, I used a recycled wood panel door, which you can get just about anywhere. In the kitchen area. Zoom in here a little bit. Uh, this kitchen area is approximately six feet wide by about four foot nine or ten, going this way. Pretty good size area, 
Uh, you can see that there's good travel path in here. This is about uh, four and a half feet wide in here. So lots of room for you to stand and move around. Uh, I've got cedar wood cabinets in here and that's why I call it a cedar billy cabin too because I used a lot of cedar in here. The chairs are made out of cedar and stuff like that. Cedar has a really nice grain to it. Uh, it's beautiful wood, easy to work with, easy to cut, lightweight, and uh, makes nice cabinets. I wouldn't use it on the cabinet top, but you can use it for your cabinet sides and front fronts and things like that. Okay, in this I've got a uh, bar style sink, which is just a single tub sink. And you could use an RV style two, two uh, tub sink if you want in here. Over my sinks, I always like to include a window in the kitchen area over my sinks for a couple reasons. For one thing, when you're doing dishes, I always get bored. I like to be looking at something besides the dishes, so I look out my window, I, I daydream of what I need to do in my yard, look at my garden. I can also see if somebody's coming up my road or on my porch while I'm doing my dishes. The other reason for this is for ventilation, so that you get good cool air coming in here to help ventilate the place. And also, when you're either cooking or washing dishes, you're going to build up a lot of steam. Steam in a small place can cause a lot of damage because it'll start rotting your wood and cause mold. You don't want your steam and moisture to build up inside the cabin. So you can crack these windows, ventilate the place, let that steam out, and while you're cooking, you can ventilate your place and your fumes and stuff like that. I always recommend you can get DC or AC... Uh, fans, ventilation fans, install one in the wall. I didn't put one up here, but I would put one wherever your cook top is. Uh, and just you can run those off of solar power, power. You can get them that are DC that work just great. So I like a window here. Now in the kitchen, I included a two burner cooktop. This could be either electric or it could be propane or natural gas. You, there's also enough room in here if you wanted to put one of the small RV style oven ranges you could drop one of those in here and that'd give you four burners with an oven if you want to put that in here I just went with a two burner cooktop because I included a microwave over here and you can see somebody's getting themselves a cup of coffee ready and this has a 4.2 cubic square foot uh, mini fridge with a freezer on top you can get these just about anywhere these 4.2 they are small enough and if you get the ones that are, are uh, low watt uh, you, uh, energy star you can run those off of solar and wind power. That's what I use in my cabin. And plenty of room for a couple people's food in there. Cabinets, storage space. i got one cabinet underneath the range top. Uh, and two cabinets underneath the sink. Uh, and up above that, on the wall, I have two more big cabinets. This runs the full length of the wall. So this is about six feet long in here. Two big cabinets and a smaller cabinet up above the uh, window over here. So plenty of room for storing your food, utensils, dishes, things like that up in these cabinets. If you wanted to, you could actually extend this cabinet all the way across clear to the wall. So this would give you up, up, upper room for more storage if you want to pull this cabinet all the way across the, the room. Now one thing when I'm designing my cabins and something that you should look for in any cabin design is traffic flow. I get real annoyed if I come into a cabin and I can't move around comfortably especially when I come in the front door because a lot of times when I come in the front door I've got my hands full of grocery bags and stuff like that I'm bringing in the house so I always design with a lot of open space in front of my front door and a good traffic path you can see that there's a whole lot of room in here this is almost four and a half feet wide over here you can come in your front door you can put your groceries on your table you can go over and put your stuff away in your cabinets you can kick your shoes off and come over to your living area no restrictions nothing you're gonna bump into over here so let's take a look at this living area now and I got a guy sitting over here just uh, kind of chilling out to give you some perspective of size in this living area I want to show you the first thing is I've got this cedar trunk and this is used as a uh, as a little table coffee table and you can see he's got him some libation going on there oh that's not good okay this also opens up and you could put some, your pillows and blankets and your games and stuff in this chest. You can be slid around and moved around anywhere you want. But this also is used for additional seating at the table, like I said. You could have a leaf on this table, open up the leaf, pull this bench over here, this seat, and two more people could sit at this table. So you could actually sit four people at this table. That's nice, okay? And in this living area, I've got a six and a half foot uh, couch bed uh, that opens up into a queen size bed. So you can move this. Uh, table over here by or this uh, box over here by this table open up your bed and you got a six foot queen size or a six and a half foot queen size bed in this area so two people could sleep down here very comfortably uh, for heat 
you have a couple options for heat. You could put in a small wood stove in one of these cabins. However, wood stoves require a lot of clearance around them in order to keep things from catching on fire. So in a small cabin like this, if I put in a wood stove, I'm going to have a problem because then I can't put my furniture right next to it. Also, wood stoves are generally harder to control the temperature. Sometimes they're too hot, sometimes they're too cold. I like wood stoves, I do. But they're more difficult to control in a small place like this. Uh, if you decide to put one in, that's fine. But what I went with is one of these propane uh, wall furnaces, which I've been using in my cabin for over 15 years. I really like this. Uh, a propane wall furnace is put up against your wall, and these can be either vented or ventless, and uh, they can keep the place warm and keep the temperature constant, and they don't cost very much in fuel. In wintertime, they could, you know, you're going to use, you know, a, a tank, uh, a uh, seven-gallon tank. Uh, every week or so, but you're, you'll go through a gallon a day. But your propane, you're also probably going to use for your cooktop, so you're going to have propane hooked up and use it anyway. And what I like about these is uh, they keep the con they keep the temperature constant. I never raise mine above level two, and in a small place like that, they'll heat up the whole place no problem. And the heat rises as the cool air pushes it up. So this heat is going to rise up into your loft opening and keep the loft up there warmer in the winter time where you're going to be sleeping and uh, so it keeps it more comfortable up there while it keeps it cooler down here so you don't have to heat the whole entire house all to the same temperature. Your warm air will rise and it will build up up in there to keep it warmer so that keeps the amount of propane you're using actually lower. And I let my dogs in in the winter time to keep them out of the cold weather and it's cooler down here on the floor than it is up in the loft where they like it. They don't want to be real hot. So I keep it, you know, 68, 65 degrees up in my loft but it might be only 60 degrees down here nice and comfortable for them to sleep, okay? If you want to and you want to raise the temperature up down here then you can pull your loft door which I'll show you and that would hold the heat down in this area. Okay, so I, I really like those wall-mounted uh, propane heaters. Now, here is the loft ladder, as you can see. And I'll pull this down. You can see the loft opening. This loft opening is 2 foot 6 inches wide and 3 foot long with a 24-inch ladder. And you can see that I've got the ladder pulled away from the wall. I've got these ladders so that you can push them up against the wall when you're not using them, pull the base out when you're using them, and they just have a little lock block up here so that it won't pull away. It's locked up against there when this is pulled out away from the wall. This angle is really important because it's a lot easier to crawl, to crawl up a ladder or climb up a ladder when it's at an angle than it is when it's straight up. If you try to crawl up a ladder when it's straight up against a wall, you're going to be having to use your arms and you're going to be leaning back and you've got a lot more chance that you're going to fall backwards or get hurt. It's a lot harder on your knees and your back. If you extend the ladder at an angle, it's much, much easier to crawl up that ladder. Now, you could put a one of those attic-type ladders that extend down where you just reach up and you grab the handle and pull it down and the ladder extends down into the room. One thing to keep in mind though is those ladders are not really made for everyday use and you may be going up this ladder five or six times a day. Those ladders are made just for uh, occasional use to get up into an attic. They're a little bit shaky. I prefer a solid wood ladder which I usually just make mine out of two by fours with two by four foot rests and it's permanent and solid. You can take the ladder out or you can push the ladder up into the attic if you really want to get it out of the way, but usually if you just push the ladder up against the wall you won't even notice it and it's out of your way. But you could use one of those pull down attic ladders or a different type of ladder if you want. Uh, again, air circulation, air comes in through the windows, goes up through the attic opening. Now I decorated this living room over here to my taste, but you can change it any way you want. I've got a couple of rifles on a rifle rack, my fishing pole, there's some place to put my ammunition in a little lock box over here. And uh, up here I put some LED track lighting. Now you can get these, they're, they're widely available now. It's going to be almost impossible to get the old fashioned type light globes here in a while because they use so much energy and they're trying to get us to reduce energy. And if you're going to be using solar or wind power, these LED lights are really nice because they don't use near as much power and because these swivel and turn you can position the lighting anywhere you want. So track lighting is really nice for these small cabins and kind of out of the way uh, and gives it a nice look up here too. But I also have a window, a three foot by two foot window up above this couch that gives natural lighting and air circulation to the inside of this cabin. And then these things over here are pivotal uh, speakers for surround sound and stereo system. I like to listen to music rather than watch TV a lot of times. So these speakers can be 
uh, directed and are small and don't use a lot of power and I can listen to my stereo or I can hook them to my TV and listen to my TV and surround sound if you want to watch movies. So this gives you a nice little entertainment and recreation area, place to read your books. I left this wall a little bit open so you could put pictures, you could put shelves, whatever you want to do in here. You could put a big shelf and cabinets along this wall instead of this uh, gun rack if you want. And uh, you can see that this, even though this is only 12 by 12, this little cabin base has a lot of room, okay? Plenty of room to move around, fix a meal, have a meal, entertain your friends and guests or whatever. Now behind this wall over here is the bathroom. And I'm going to go around the other side and pull the wall off to show you the bathroom so I can give you a better view of it up there. So that's the inside of a 12 by 12 foot base. And you can see that has a lot of room in it. So let's put this wall back on and we'll go around to the other side. Okay, folks, now I'm on the other side of the cabin. I'm going to take this wall off so we can take a look at the bathroom. So just click on that and click hide. And uh, here you can see this wall, which is on the other side of the, the cabin, which is the kitchen area. Here you can see the back side of the cabinets, microwave and the sink over here. Now, I just wanted to show you, you can't see much through here, but uh, I wanted to show you through to this wall on the other side I left this wall completely open around this window and it has enough room that if you want to uh, you could put some more cabinets you might put a bookshelf or an entertainment center right here underneath this window uh, with a TV that kind of swivels out that way when, when you're sitting on your couch you have a nice uh, area there for your entertainment center your stereo your TV some bookshelves or whatever there okay the bathroom back up here a little bit this has a approximately five foot wide by about four foot nine inch bathroom, which gives you plenty of room for a standard shower base. Or you could put a shower stall here, but a shower base takes up a little less room. And I like curtains uh, because you can always push a curtain out of the way if you need to get to something. It makes it easier to clean and stuff like that than a shower stall. And uh, you can pick up these shower bases at just about any Home Depot. And you can see here it's got the shower handle and uh, against the wall and the shower nozzle over here. Now you may want to switch this with where the sink is. That way you could run your water directly through this wall and have your shower over here. But I put it against this wall and it would mean that you'd probably need to run your plumbing underneath the floor and over to this wall. But either way would work fine. I included a, a standard toilet which could be either a uh, commercial grade toilet or a composting toilet. Plenty of room there for you to take care of business okay little toilet paper holder there and then I included a pedestal sink just because a pedestal sink gives you a little bit more room uh, in a small bathroom like this but if you want to put in a, uh, a standard uh, sink base with cabinets underneath it you could put that in there there's enough room in here for a standard sink base I didn't put any shelves or any mirrors or anything on the walls here I'll let you decide how you want to decorate it up now I put a 2 by 2 window in here like I said for ventilation and circulation, the air, cool air will come in, go out and carry this warm air out of this bathroom. Also important when you're running water in your sinks or in your shower to keep the steam out of here. I always recommend a ventilation fan in your uh, bathroom. That way you can turn it on for a few minutes when you're showering just to get that steam out of there. Otherwise, you're going to have mold build up and you're going to have wood start to rot in your bathrooms. Okay, not a very big bathroom, but plenty functional. Enough room there, sink, sink uh, shower, and toilet. What else do you need in a bathroom, right? It takes care of all your needs. All right, so that's that side of the cabin. Now let's go up and take a look at the loft. Okay, so here we are back out at the front of the cabin, and I'm going to pull this loft wall off so we can take a look in there. So I'll just select that and go up to Edit and Hide. Take that wall off. Now this loft is 16 feet long by 12 foot wide, 18 feet from this peak to this peak, but 16 feet from this peak to this peak, okay? And this gives you a lot of room uh, for a bedroom, office, however you want to use it up here. Uh, and like I said, this has six feet of headroom from the floor up to this peak. And most people are under six foot tall, so an adult can stand up in here. I've got the loft opening just over to the uh, side of center so that as you come up the ladder you could stand straight up in this loft and then you can walk right past the ladder in this area without bumping your head over to your bed. Now this has enough room in it, it's actually a very nice size loft, 
uh, because it has enough room for this is a queen size platform bed and you can see that it has drawers underneath so you can pull these drawers out and you have this uh, space under here for storage that's really nice and then I designed this uh, little TV stand because I like to watch TV in bed and with an LCD flat screen TV two people you could also make this a full length if you want with shelves underneath it for books or whatever uh, put a stereo in there but this gives you a nice little entertainment area for watching TV or whatever while you're in bed I put some more of those uh, LED uh, track lights up above the window here got a nice window for circulation air and light over the bed That's real nice uh, plenty of room in here to sit on your bed change your clothes or whatever now people are always wondering about this loft opening Okay, and they're worried that they're gonna fall down which you should be you should be concerned because you know That's an opening and if you fell down it, you'd probably break your neck So you want to have some way to protect yourself especially if you got kids up in here They get wrestling around pushing each other around somebody falls down the loft opening So what I suggest for these loft openings is just to make you a good solid board cover that goes over it and then if you've got uh, kids up here especially or if you're up here at night and you want to seal off this opening or anytime you're up here all you got to do is slide that board over that opening and now you can see you've got an, a, a nice opening over that uh, loft hatch to that is solid enough that you could actually step on it though I don't recommend you do that a lot but that you would want to cut slots in it to kind of go around your ladder I didn't cut the slots here because I don't know what your ladder is going to look like uh, but here you you would have a nice covering over it that's solid enough that nobody's going to fall down in there you could make this hinged if you want but i just slide mine over the opening when i'm up there if i want to seal that off if i'm worried about it or if i'm working on something and uh, so that gives you the safety protection now another thing people are always asking me about is how do you get the furniture up into these cabins you certainly couldn't get this bed up through that little loft opening okay well there's a trick to that one thing you, you do a little advanced planning okay before you put your loft floor on and before you finish all of the loft uh, floor joists you leave a couple of floor joists off right here and that way you can bring up any big furniture first you put your furniture up in here first and then you finish off the, the floor joist now once that furniture is up in there you're probably not going to take it back down so you want to make sure it's going to be something you like as permanent another way you can do it is you can bring up furniture now you can buy furniture that comes together in pieces in boxes Okay, and the boxes usually aren't that big like Ikea carries a lot of stuff that comes in boxes that you just put together later You can bring the boxes up here in your loft and then to use your, your tools and put your beds and stuff like that together in pieces up in the loft So you don't have to bring them up as one entire unit. You can bring them up in pieces small stuff No problem. You can just bring that stuff up through the ladder opening Okay, so that's how we get the furniture up in there first and in, in my cabin what I did is I left one floorboard next to my loft that is four by four and I can take that board off if I have to I just unscrew it in a few places take that board off and that way I can take bigger furniture back down and put bigger furniture back up if I need to okay so that's another option now on this side you could uh, put a nice dresser I've got a 12 drawer dresser that's a big nice big dresser in there you could go with a smaller dresser and a desk for an office or you could do a, a, a built-in over here with enough room for hanging clothes and you can see that there's a lot of room in here this really has a lot of room this would be a nice area for your knickknacks and books and your lamps and stuff like that another window on this side so you get cross air ventilation you get cooler air coming up warm air being pushed out and you can see that this loft is would make a really really nice bedroom office uh, you could actually put about four single beds in here uh, for kids so you could actually sleep four kids up in here a couple of adults up in here There's enough room in here. You could put another couple of single beds on these sides over here You could sleep uh, two kids and a couple of adults up here all in a small 12 by 16 cabin So that's a whole lot of room give you a little bit different perspective there track lighting bed and platform nice drawers underneath that little entertainment center Desk or uh, clothing clothing storage a dresser uh, and of course 12 by 16 with enough peak headroom up here for somebody that's under six foot tall to walk around comfortably all in a 12 by 6 16 cabin so that's the cabin design let me go back out here to the front and uh, I'll talk about these plans a little bit more okay folks that is the 12 by 16 Cedar Billy cabin and uh, I am going to make the sketchup files available for all of these cabins 
uh, but I'm not going to be releasing them now until I finish the book. As I've told people, I'm writing a book called Ten Tiny Cabins that can be built for under ten thousand or under two thousand dollars, and will all be under two hundred square feet, so they can be built in rural areas generally without uh, having to have a building permit. Uh, but I'm not going to release the SketchUp files for these uh, cabins now that I'm designing until I release the book. But I am going to show you these videos. That will whet, whet your appetite, I hope, make you want to uh, consider getting that book. And you can get a lot of ideas from the videos. And if you have construction skills, you can probably figure out how to build one just from watching the videos. But the SketchUp files in the book will contain very detailed plans for how to frame all the walls, put in your doors and windows, and a lot of tips for installing solar and wind power, and uh, keeping your cabins cool without air conditioning and stuff like that. So the book is going to be very, very full of lots of great ideas and great plans that I think you're really going to enjoy. On the SketchUp files, you will also be able to download the SketchUp files with the book. And you, these SketchUp files are all completely modifiable. So you can change any of the materials. Uh, you can change the colors of anything that you want to. And you can click on anything. And you can open them up so you can see them. So you can click on the SketchUp file. And you can simply hide that to see the inside of the loft. And if you want to change furniture, you can click on anything that's part of the furniture and you can remove it uh, simply by clicking on hide. Uh, remove that, make that a two dresser drawer instead of a three dresser. You want to take out the bed, the TV, whatever, just click on it and remove it. If you don't like that TV up there, just click on it, click on hide or delete and get rid of it. And you know, change this any way you want. You want to open up and look on the inside of the wall, click on that, click on hide. There you go, you can see the inside of the cabin. Uh, the SketchUp files are really, I made them so that they'd be easy to modify so you can change the decorations, the features on these cabins any way you want, okay? I made them for people that want to design their own cabins, not so, so you have to use my designs. That's the whole idea. I give you the, the basic idea and show you how to build them, and then the rest is up to you. And uh, you can, you'll be able to use these using Google SketchUp, and you can download from Google SketchUp all this furniture and tons and tons more. So you can go, you know, you just go crazy and design these any way you want, uh, move anything around you want in these plans, okay? So that's a 12 by 16 Cedar Billy Cabin designed by Solar Cabin, and it will be included in my book along with uh, nine, at least nine other cabin plans, all under 200 square feet that can be built for around or under $2,000. I hope you enjoyed it, folks. Please visit my website. I do have the A-frame cabin uh, available, and I give you the free SketchUp file, so you can download the SketchUp files on that and play around with it. And uh, I, as soon as I get this book done, I'll put up put a uh, notice up on YouTube and on my channel, uh, let you know the book's available and the plans are available. And uh, my website is simplesolarhomesteading.com. Go and visit that. I really suggest you pick up my book, Ultimate Off Grid, if you don't already have a copy, uh, because that will help you with knowing how to install solar and wind power and a lot of other uh, features uh, that you might want on your homestead, and also talks about small cabins and how to build them. A lot of the construction practices are included in that book. All right, folks, hope you enjoyed that Cedar Billy Cabin. Thanks for stopping by my channel. Make sure you subscribe, and have a great day.